Hey guys, Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening. Uh, we're going to finish up that case that we was working on the other night on the uh, silicon carbide combination stone. Um, first, uh, there was somebody that was asking to, to see Bosco. You know, I showed him to you guys on, uh, on another video when he was just a puppy. Sorry, my bed's a mess. Hang on. Bosco. Come here. Come here. Come here. That's Bosco now. He's growing into quite a big boy. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. He's a big old baby. He's turned into a really good dog. Alright. You can go on. Yeah, he's got a sweater on. There you go. Okay. Now for the sharpening. Let's tilt this down just a little bit. He's turned into a pretty good dog. So, there's a case that we're working on. I've been wanting to carry this thing, but it's uh, it it's all right to use, but still got that burr on it. I'm gonna show you guys here before we get started. It's got a decent edge. It's not super shaving sharp, but But uh, when we get done with this video, I'm probably, I'm going to at least finish finish the three blades on the soft. Depending on where we're at, I might go to the black or this hard that I've got over here. So, where my little spray bottle is, we'll just use this big one. Let's start out on that... Uh, little flesh in blade. And guys that uh that silicon carbide that we was using last video, you know I really didn't think about it until uh, Wayne was emailing me or he was either emailing me or he left a comment about this but you guys have seen me use a lot of a lot of my diamond plates on these videos and I haven't really been using them a whole lot lately but uh, you know when when people would ask I didn't even get a rag when people would ask you know, hey, you know, what, what do I need to start out sharpening with? What, what would you recommend? I always recommended, you know, the diamonds to begin with. You know, even if they was interested in marks. The reason being is because the diamonds show results real quick. It'll tell you whether you're doing good or screwing up. So you can adjust quick. Uh, and they leave a good edge. You know, nothing wrong with the edge off a diamond stone. But the... Uh, those silicon carbide stones, I don't know why I didn't think of this a long time ago, which, I mean, I knew about them, but didn't think of recommending them, um, because, you know, at that point in time, you know, I really wasn't using them much, and I really didn't have many of them, um, but the, that silicon carbide stone is really forgiving, um, uh, it doesn't, you know, removes steel as quick as a diamond would. Um, you don't get as crisp of an edge as you do with diamonds off of the uh, silicon carbide stone. And, obviously, they cut a little bit slower. So, 
you know, it's a cheaper option and you can you can really learn on that stone if that makes sense. You can look at it, look at your edge and, and see what you're doing right or wrong. And, you know, if you gouge one or drop it and break it, you ain't out much. We'll see how this edge looks here in just a second. Definitely a lot better than it was. Need a little bit more work on it. And one thing I found out recently, which I, you know, always knew, but I kind of, kind of left it behind <laughs> due to how I've been sharpening the past few years, but. <clears throat> I am guilty of lapping my stones the same on both sides. You know, if I've got one that's just purely going to be a finisher, that's fine. But like these softs, like I was saying in that other video that I posted recently, you know, you can manipulate a soft really easy. And it, it's a fairly forgiving stone as well. But uh, I always lap my stones probably higher than they should should be lapped to begin with and that's part of the reason I get such good edges but you know if you don't lap them as much and leave a coarser finish on them they cut amazingly and I, I'm going to do a video on that I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do it or how I'm going to do it Yeah, we're getting better out there. But anyway, um, I had a black the other night that was lapped straight from Dan's. And I was like, eh, I'll just, you know, I hadn't used it yet. And I was like, I'll just throw this knife on here and touch it up. It was uh, this one right here. You guys have seen that one on that channel. That's what I carry a lot of the time. That's a great Eastern possum. And uh, it didn't really do anything for it. And I was like, well, well, that's weird. You know, what the heck? You know, it was dull, but it wasn't just crazy dull. And uh, I started getting a little bit of a burr off that stone. And I noticed it was cutting metal really quick when I, when I wiped the stone off. And I was like, man, that's weird for a black. And then I went from that black to another one of my blacks that... It has been completely lapped and probably like 2,000 or 2,500 grit. And the edge that I got was just wow. If that tells you anything, I almost cut the end of my finger out there. that's a pretty thin blade too but that that knife right there is like a little scalpel but like I said I'm gonna do a video on that do a couple more passes on this guy and we'll go to the next blade stone start to dry out just a little bit It's plenty sharp the way that one is. And uh, you guys also leave me a comment down below question. I've got I'd like an answer to from some of you guys. 
Um, I think it was Dom Bond. I think that's the guy's name on here. He said that he likes the videos where I uh, just talk and sharpen a lot. And I really don't post a lot of those because it doesn't seem like it would keep the interest of a lot of people based upon my YouTube stats that I see in my YouTube studio. But I can never make it a, a video very appealing to everybody. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Do you like these videos that a little longer like this one's going to be? Where I, you know, talk about stones and blades and, you know, whatever. I'd, I'd like to know that because if that's the case, I'll start doing more of them. Always kind of feel like y'all can't see me sharpen very well. I haven't had any complaints about people not being able to see what I'm doing or um, my angle or anything, so I assume that it's fine for you guys. And I can always switch back to the original camera angle if you guys like it. It was. It was right here in the center, you know, kind of over me. I actually bought a little tripod here a while back, and I almost used it tonight, but the legs, I think, will get in the way for me. And, uh, you know, I was looking through some old YouTube videos earlier, and I have got one video on here that I really thought a lot of people would view, and I don't even, I think it's got like 388 views, and it was from like a year, year and a half ago. Um, I had a Battle Horse Comanche, and I actually shaved my beard off with it on camera. If you guys haven't seen that yet, go look at it. <laughs> yeah. Shave my beard off down to bare skin with that knife. Right off of Black Arkansas. No strops. You guys hear how rough that edge is? And I will also say that fine crystal on that I finished this these blades with last, that is 320 grit. Um, and that is considered Norton's fine crystal on. So I got thinking about it the other night. You know what I was going to continue this edge with on video and that is the same grit as DMT's course so really I'm coming off what I usually do I'm coming off a course going straight to a, a soft Arkansas which this thing right here I've honestly probably got it lapped around a thousand it needs to go down to about five six seven hundred somewhere around in there not really this particular one this is one I can just break out and do touch-ups with you know if it's not super dull that's the reason I chose this 
particular stone. I will have to say too, I'm I'm enjoying sharpening this little case. This thing's this thing feels pretty good in the hand and I'm liking the steel. Do just a little bit more on ah, this stone. And also, with this soft, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it, but I'm putting just a little bit. Just a little bit more than the weight of the hand. Set that one over the side. And this is a, uh, this one's kind of, kind of odd. You know, I really have not figured out if this is an actual hard. Or if it's a super fine Washita. The box is labeled. Smith's Hard Arkansas, but it, it, it cuts pretty different, and I don't know if you guys can see that, there's just a little bit of translucency to it, and it, it would transmit a lot better if I had a flat end on this light, but it, uh, it passes a lot pretty decent. This stone cuts so weird, like, what I mean by weird, like, it's smooth feeling, smoother than the soft. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right here, it's cutting steel, more so than the soft did, which I don't think I lapped this one as much as I did that soft, or maybe I've used that soft a little bit more, I really can't remember. But I have gotten, off that Great Eastern I showed you guys a few minutes ago, I have gotten some fantastic edges off of this stone and just left it like it is.
let's see what we've got here. That damn thing, it's already sharper. I can leave that edge right where it's at and I'd be happy with it. Definitely catching fingernail. Now this, this blade right here, it's not, the stone really isn't pulling a lot of steel off of it. It's not streaking like the other one did. It's it's sharp, but it's it's not. That's one reason I don't use a whole lot of silicon carbide because or stones anyway. They work great. Um, there's nothing wrong with them at all, but it just doesn't feel like as I'm progressing through the stones that I've got as crisp of an edge to start off with. If if that makes sense. Now it goes pulling steel. That's weird. You can kind of see it piling up right there. Go to the next one.
one thing, guys, if, if you've, I don't know if you guys have ever really noticed this, but there are some stones that some knives just seem to like better. Like this knife right here. At this point, with this great eastern that I've got, uh, it would have it would have been razor sharp already. This one's good and sharp, but it's not just like crazy sharp like I want it to be. And again, like I said, I, I had seen something where somebody said something about Case's new CV steel. So I don't know what they've changed in it or even if they have. Um, I've got a couple of older cases here that uh, is the original CV. And I'm going to see how they stack up against this CV. It's turning out just like I want it to. That blade right there is actually a little sharper than this one. Okay, let's go to our black here. Sometimes, if uh, for me, if uh, if I've got an edge, it's 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 a decent edge. Uh, sometimes, if I hop over my black for whatever reason, it just brings it to life. Or a translucent. That may be the case with this knife. We'll find out here in just a minute. getting there just how I want it. Definitely improving the edge. And I'm liking the way the steel's doing on this black Arkansas. And I'm just using the weight of my hand on this black.
those microfiber cloths, they, they like hold moisture on the surface. That's the reason I'm using my shirt. That little blade right there, I mean, it's just not, I mean, it's taking a good edge, but not nowhere near what I thought it would take. Which sometimes, too, when uh, when you sharpen a new knife, where the very edge is put on that belt, uh, sometimes you have fatigued or stressed steel, and it doesn't sharpen as well as when you get up in the actual blade a little bit. So this may take a couple of sharpenings to get that out of. Let's see how this thing cuts. Oh yeah, it's plenty sharp. This uh, this steel's got really good feedback with this stone. I got a feeling if I just sit here with this thing for a while, this thing would just be razor sharp. And this very well may be one of those steels I've, I haven't run into a whole lot of them, but uh. It's the carbon based steel that's actually more of a pain in the butt to sharpen than like a super steel. Can't explain it to you, but um, like uh, I've run across a couple old charades that were just a damn nightmare to sharpen. Don't know why. And uh, tell you another steel that freaking sucks to sharpen is uh, Spyderco's older 154CM. I, I try not to even mess with that stuff. See, I used a Lansky for quite a while, several years ago. I just kind of I put freehand down for a while and really didn't have many bench stones at all until I got my DMTs back. I had a couple of Arkansas laying around. That was about it. And my buddy brought over one of the older uh, Saber Grind Mannixes, Spyderco Mannixes at 154CM. And I had, I think it's like a 300 grit stone the synthetic course that comes with Lansky and I dish that stone and ruin it trying to reprofile that that knife and I still didn't get reprofiled with that stone so I had to go on ahead and move to my fine and finish up with that and I pretty much ruined that stone too work on the back of this blade right here just a little bit front's catching just a little bit more of an edge before the back does
Yeah, I'm just going to spend a little bit more time on the stone. Or maybe give it a good stropping. I think we've got a little bit of fatigue still here. Which is fine. So, uh, guys, I'm going to do, we're already at 36 minutes. Uh, I'm going to work a little bit more on this off camera. Probably not tonight, but uh, just wanted to do a video working on that thing and finishing up the first edge on it. and We'll sharpen it again. I'm I'm sure with the way that steel's feeling right now, it'll it'll need another sharpening fairly quickly. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave me some comments down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I appreciate you guys watching. See you in the comments.